Okay, so for these castle looking castle joint things, we basically got two pieces of wood that we're working with and we want there to be these four pieces on the outside and then the half lap joint that goes on the inside. So we're really only working with two pieces of wood. And uh, you know, with a lot of things with woodworking, you can do a whole bunch of math and measure out and cut things and do everything. In a lot of cases, I, I just use the wood and trace stuff out. So I found the center of this wood, which I want to be in the center of this wood. So all I've done is mark out the very center of this piece of wood. I've marked out the very center of this piece of wood. I laid the two centers right on top of each other. And then I've traced out the edge of this board just to help me to know where my saw is. I've already gone through the, the process of squaring this all up. I've, I've joined it, I've planed it. All my corners are square, it's all uniform. Same thing with this, plain, straight, square, 90 degrees. I know my saw set at 90 degrees. I know my saw, run, saw runs um, 90 degrees. Like what is that, perpendicular? Perpendicular? Yeah, perpendicular to the blade. I've got this set at 90 degrees. And I realize I'm, I'm showing you how to do this on a saw that probably a lot of guys don't have, but I used to do this exact same thing on a, on a saw with just a, a fence. And I, I built a bit of a jig for it. I don't even have it anymore, but it's the same principle. Like you're basically gonna set the saw once. You can do all your cuts. And, um, and, and I'm, I'm using this slide and setting my block up against my stopper here that I've already set. And I found where my blade is just on the inside of the line that I cut. Because with these joints, you want everything to be nice and tight. It's, it's better to actually air on more tight than on too loose because we want them to go together tight, especially once we put the glue in because that's what's gonna hold it all together. So I, I, when I made my, my lines with my board, I'm now putting the outside of my blade, the very outside of the, of the tooth, right on the inside of the pencil line. And then I'm basically gonna be able to cut and then flip it and then cut and cut and flip and just keep on going like that. So I'm gonna go one time that way, one time that way, and then two on the opposite two sides, and that'll give my, my castle joint. So now you can see I've made those one, two, three, four cuts. These four pieces will stay on the outside and this cross basically on the inside now gets cut out and chiseled out. And then these boards are gonna fit right inside of there. Okay, so now that we've got these all cut, uh, I'm gonna show you two ways to, to get these pieces out. One is a little bit slower, um, but you get a pretty nice finish and that's just to use the saw blade on your table saw and just start um, chipping away at it. I'll take my um, guide here and just basically keep moving in at a saw blade's width and then just keep turning the board around and taking one side off each side until they're all gone on, on both areas. Um, I've said this before, I, I, like it would be nice if I had a dado stack to do that with, but this saw, because of the slide and because of the way that they've set this table in, actually doesn't accept uh, a dado stack. So I'm, I, I either do stuff like this, just kind of slow, or uh, there's a way that I'll use the multi-tool and a chisel and a hammer, like an old pioneer. Okay, so I told you that I was gonna show you another way of basically getting all this middle stuff out of these uh, castle joints. And I got in a zone, it got working, and I totally forgot to. I will kind of show you though, um, and some people might laugh at me for doing this, but I will take um, my, my square, I'll use my knife and slice along the edge so I know where I'm, where I'm cutting. I'll use this multi-tool and not right on the line because these things vibrate and go all over the place, not that precise, but I'll cut just above the line, push that all the way down through and cut that out and then come back after with a sharp chisel and, and um, clean that up and hammer that out. In any event, we're moving on to the next deal. So what we're gonna do now is We've got these half lap joints that need to go inside these castle joints. And there's a couple reasons why I actually like these castle joints. Number one, they're actually really strong. And number two, they're, they're really cool looking. And when people come and look at your furniture, it's not something that's always done on furniture. Um, it looks a little complex and, and nifty and, and cool and stuff like that. And anytime you can add just a little bit of complexity or a little bit of um, 
you know, craftsmanship or whatever into the furniture, it catches people's eye. It makes them come and take a look. So for, for a little bit extra effort and time, you can get a kind of a cool looking deal. In any event, we're gonna, uh, oops. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do now is I want these to hang out half an inch outside of this castle joint. So I'm gonna mark off half an inch. I'm gonna ram that back in there and I'm gonna to come to where that half inch is hanging out. Just right. And then I'm actually gonna mark, oh geez, come on. And then I'm gonna mark right here where those line up. And that's gonna give me two marks here. should be the thickness of that board, which it is. And again, we want these to be nice and tight. So, so I, I'll, I'll double check, even though I knew that those ones were right, it still doesn't hurt to put the board on here and you can see, well, maybe you can, maybe you can, I don't know. Um, that, that lines up just perfect. And so we're gonna want this board to just slide halfway over. They're called half laps because you're cutting half the board out. So from here, actually, what I'll do is I'll line up all the boards I'm gonna be using Nice and even on the end. Come on. And I'll mark all of those out using these same marks. And I'm gonna use that when I, I already have one video that shows you how to do these half, lap, half laps on the um, chop saw. Now I'm gonna show you how to do them on the table saw. So this same board that has the mark on it, now I'm gonna flip around and just like I did on this side, I'm gonna mark all the ones on that side. This is a square table. This is the same measurement that's gonna go across all of them. So as long as you're lined up nice and flush on this side and your boards are all the same width and all the same distance, then this is gonna work like a charm. And I'm gonna mark the, that out. Okay, and then we'll head over to the table saw and I'll show you how I cut these. Okay, so now that we've marked where these go out, we're gonna use the, the uh, table saw to basically hollow this out or cut it out or make the joint. Um, this saw is kind of cool because I've got this, this uh, slide system here. So I've actually set up two of my stops. This stop here tells me how far I'm supposed to go that way. And this stop over here tells me how far I'm supposed to go that way. So I'm actually just going to turn the saw on and then just start working my way through the board until I hit the other stop. And I can do that to all of them. I've gone on this board and marked the exact halfway and I've set the height of my saw blade to meet that halfway. You have to set the height of your saw blade at the, like at the top of the, of the blade. Like if, if the blade's over here and you're setting the top, you're setting your, your height based on that, you're not getting all the way. So try and find the spot where the top of your carbide tip is, is at its highest and you wanna set it according to that or else you'll end up too high or too low. Okay, so now you can see we've got a nice square void there and I've cut two of these now. And if you've done them right, when you go and put them together, then they should line up nice and flush on the top. And then you've got a, a nice half lap. And it's a nice, like, it's a nice solid uh, joint. It doesn't really move very much. And then we're going to glue it and put it inside that castle joint and make ourselves like a real nice tight joint. Okay, so now if we've done all our cuts right and all our measurements were right and we held our board straight and all our angles were done right, then in theory this all should match up. So I always give everything just a quick dry test to see what happens. And uh, basically if we set enough Facebook prayers or sent out enough uh, requests for Facebook thoughts and prayers, then this should all fit together. Yeah. Nice. If not, then I'm gonna look like an idiot. You can all laugh at me. that so it's a nice it's already a nice like solid square base like it, it holds itself square and then these babies will fit right on top so far so good
Looks like we got that one done. So now I'm gonna take these uh, half lap pieces and give them a little bit of a rounded edge on, on these, just cause I like how it looks. Actually, they look kind of nice square. Now I'm gonna round them. And then uh, we can glue this baby okay, So up. on these pieces that are gonna be sticking out um, and exposed, I'm gonna round these, these corners off. I think I've done a video of this already before. Um, you can use obviously a router bit and get really nice, perfect rounded corners. Or sometimes I'll just use this um, hand, or, uh, hand sander, or not the hand sander, but this porter cable uh, belt sander. And then, and then I round them off so they're not quite as uniform um, and they sort of catch the light each a little bit different. this baby up what you're gonna see me do first is put some glue in these half lap joints put those together and then just like when I did the dry test I'm gonna put the corner posts all around but first I'm gonna put some glue where the corner posts are gonna go down along anywhere where wood is gonna meet wood I'll set those babies in place and uh, we'll see where we go from there like I, I, I can't really tell you exactly what I'm going to do because a lot of, the, of woodworking just comes down to a couple principles and so as you're, as you're doing things, sometimes you're sort of shooting from the hip. But the general principle here is that you've seen that as I put this together, my joints are nice and tight. There's a fine line between too tight of a joint and not tight, you know, a joint that's not tight enough. If it's not tight enough and it's loose and everything, then when you go put glue in there, it's just a, it's just a mess. It's not holding together. You know when you do a glue up and you take two flat edges and you mate them together, and then you put some nice pressure on it or some light pressure on it, and then the glue is stuck in between and it goes in and kind of gets into the fibers of the wood and then it dries and it bonds everything together. So the same principle applies here. If the joint is tight enough, like you see when I was sort of patting it in with my hand, that's kind of a good indication where you've got to tap it in or pat it in with your hand. Then you've got a tight enough joint that you've got wood mating up and it's holding itself together and the glue in between then has a chance to bond. On the, uh, on, the, on the other hand, you can also have too tight of a joint. If you haven't cut enough off or you haven't done it quite right and you go to hit things together, then you're gonna break the wood or maybe you won't break the wood right now, but in a week or two weeks or three weeks or a day or a month, that, that pressure isn't gone and you're basically ramming something inside of this slot that's not supposed to fit there and eventually wherever that weakest link is, it's gonna crack and break. It might just crack and break or it might just break. So there's kind of a fine line between a joint that's too tight and a joint that's not tight enough. And you gotta kind of be right there in the middle where, where things are just right. And you know, basically what I like to look for is if, if I'm putting, like you saw when I'm putting it together, I have to kind of beat it in with my hand. I don't think I filmed it when I pull it apart, like I have to yank it apart. Um, so yeah, glue in all the joints, make sure the joints are tight. If, if I get part way through and I notice that something is loose for some reason, then I might clamp. I probably will use my brad nailer at some point when I put these castle joints on. I might tack in the back. Um, I'll use my level. You'll see me kind of put my square in and make sure my legs are all right. Depending on how tight it is and how well everything is sitting together, sometimes I grab a clamp from top to bottom and pull the leg down into the joint. And sometimes I flip it right over, pre-drill through the half lap joint and then sink a screw right down through into the leg and then suck that all, all together. It just kind of depends on how it's all fitting together and how tight everything's looking. But if you're, if you're kind of governing yourself by those principles, then you're gonna, you're gonna end up with a good product. Okay, so I did end up deciding to flip it over and uh, do a couple pre-drills and then I sunk a four inch um, screw down through the, the lap joint and into this um, four by four leg. And it kind of just sucked it all nice together. It was tight, it was pretty good. I just wanted it a little bit more. Um, and now I've just kind of gone around. Everything was sitting nice and square. I've gone around a couple times with my square just to make sure the legs are all sitting just right. Um, it might have been unnecessary, but I did it anyways. And, and so now it's all sitting square. It's just sitting here on the floor. Uh, I'm not going to do anything else to it and except let the... All right, it's dry. tomorrow and the glue's dry. I've just cleaned these babies up. And so I'm taking a look at it right now and criticizing myself, or at least I want to tell you how I critique myself. What I'm looking for is nice tight joints. Not much in... Oh, I can't even do this. Not much in terms of a gap right here or here or really anywhere where wood meets up. And so I did a pretty good job with my joinery. You can see that it's tight in all those corners everywhere. It's nice clean lines. 
And um, now we've got a nice solid joint. You can see where I pre-drilled and put that four inch screw in to hold this deal all together. And yeah, we're looking pretty good.